Once upon a time, there was a little boy who could not sleep at night. He was afraid that the big bad wolf would come and get him. Well, that little boy, that was me. And I wasn't the only one, because in many countries we tell stories to our children in which carnivores, such as wolves or tigers, are the bad guys. Because they eat meat and maybe they will eat you. And this shapes our perception towards these animals as bloodthirsty criminals. But are they really so bad? Fearing from themselves and their livestock, people have hunted and poisoned carnivores for centuries, and this has had its consequences. For example, the wolf disappeared from large parts of Europe, including the Netherlands, and also in North America, wolves were hunted to extinction in many areas, including one of the most famous national parks, Yellowstone. After the disappearance of the wolf in Yellowstone, one of its prey species, the wapiti, was able to live free of danger. They could go wherever they wanted, so they stayed close to the rivers where food and water were abundant. There was only one problem, because the plants around the rivers, they were not used to such high grazing pressures, so they started to disappear. In 1995, the wolf was reintroduced into Yellowstone, and as a consequence, the wapiti had to move all over the place to avoid being eaten. And this gave the opportunity for the plants to grow back and other animal species, such as the beaver, that were also dependent on these plants, could come back. So reintroducing wolves had an effect on other animals and plants by changing the behavior of its prey species. Well, wapiti are not the only prey animals to change their behavior out of fear for predators. Similarly, the much smaller bankful changes its behavior by moving less and avoiding risky places when the weasel, its natural predator, is around. And these two species could live in your garden, because did you know that the forests and fields here around Ede are the home for no less than seven species of carnivores? Some of these species, such as the red fox, might be familiar to you, while others, such as the polecat or the pine marten, might not. All of these species were hunted and poisoned in the past, but they're protected now, and they're slowly coming back. But there's one species that has made a spectacular comeback throughout the Netherlands, and that's the stone marten. Some of you might know the stone marten as a problem species, because it can bite your car cables or live in your house, causing trouble. But luckily, these problems are relatively easy to overcome, because you can make it unpleasant for the stone marten to stay in your car, and you can close the gap in your house through which it can enter. And what a lot of people do not know is that stone martens also have a good side, because they eat rats and mice. And these are animals that we also don't want in our house or garden. Last summer in Maastricht, they found out that fighting rats with poison is less effective than fighting rats by protecting their natural predators, such as these stone martens, but also foxes and stoats. Rats are a problem because they carry diseases. So indirectly, by protecting their predators, we can reduce disease risk. Similarly, mice are carriers of many diseases, including the famous Lyme disease, which they transmit to ticks that are feeding on them. Those ticks can then, later, those ticks can then later bite us and make us ill. And in my research on Lyme disease, I discovered that the chance for people to get Lyme disease is much lower in areas where there's high numbers of carnivores, such as martens and foxes. And I think this is because those mice respond in the same way as the wapiti and the bankful. Out of fear for their predators, they move less. And as a consequence, they encounter fewer ticks. And when the mice encounter fewer ticks, fewer ticks get Lyme disease, and ultimately the risk for us is lower. So it looks like that by protecting these carnivores, we can reduce disease risk. Well, there's many more examples showing that carnivores can change the behavior and the densities of the prey species, thereby possibly reducing disease risk, crop damage, or other hazards to humans. So, rather than being bloodthirsty criminals, these animals are actually nature's policemen maintaining law and order. 
So luckily, they're now protected by law, which has resulted in the comeback of species such as the wolf that was sighted again in the Netherlands after 150 years of absence. Unfortunately, for meat eaters that need a large area to live in, hunting is not the only problem. People are still converting more and more nature into agriculture and cities. So in order to survive, these carnivores will have to adapt to living in a modern world. They will have to transform. And species like the stone marten show that these animals are capable of doing that. But they can only do so if we allow them to live closer to us, if we allow them to live in those human-dominated landscapes. Well, hopefully today I've showed you that you should be more afraid of a little mouse than you should be scared of the big bad wolf. But the big question still remains. Can we, modern people, get used to living close to carnivores again? Can we also go through a transformation to save the monsters from our bedtime stories to make this world a healthier place? Well, I think we can. And then wolves, foxes and martens can live happily ever after.